Hey, good people. Welcome back to Beauty in the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for today's video. So you may have recalled in one of my recent videos that I was talking about returning these items from the Bridgerton collection. I really debated on it and I decided to keep it because I'm a clown. So if you would like to see some looks with this palette, keep on watching this video. Let me know what you think. I'm sure I may already know. And if makeup is your therapy, if it's your love, if it makes you happy, and you wanna connect with another makeup enthusiast that has the same struggles and feels the same way about all this makeup, definitely consider joining the community because I would love to have you back. All right, let's get started. So yes, y'all, I'm a clown. Now, I'm about halfway through Bridgerton season two, and maybe that's why I kept the palette. I don't know. <laughs> I really do do love Bridgerton, I, and I really am enjoying the second season, but I don't know what this particular outcome is going to be, but they are definitely in a predicament, and uh, I'm very curious. Also, y'all, I just got my hair done. <laughs> I needed it so bad, y'all. It was, it was, it was really needed. All right, let's get to it, y'all. This is round two with Bridgerton by Pat McGrath, and I know you all have seen a lot of reviews. Normally, I would have tried to get this up right away. I, I just did not feel inspired. I had other things that I was really wanting to use, and I just wasn't quite sure whether or not I wanted to keep it. I really haven't looked at many reviews. I think I just looked at Kinky Sweats. So this round two of Bridgerton, I believe, was inspired by Lady Whistledown, who was a character in the show. I, I, I'm not sure where I'm seeing that inspiration and that's fine it came with this palette which is another six pan it came with this blush palette and y'all have already seen it I'm not even going to go into all the details but although those blush colors looked so beautiful I just could not bring myself to purchase it it was just bulky I knew it was cardboard I just didn't want that and I probably would have tried to do something crazy like depot it. My, my hope is that she will come out with those shades in maybe a blush trio or something like that. I would definitely get that because those shades are gorgeous. I'll pop up a picture of the blush palette in case you haven't seen it. Now, what I thought was the most exciting of this release were the lipsticks. And there were a bunch of lipsticks that came out. I only purchased one. And I purchased the shade Venetian Peach. But to my surprise, even though it looks really cute right here, looking at it in person and feeling it, it feels so cheap. And I said that before I had seen any reviews, like I was like dropping it like on things to like listen to the, like to listen to how light it felt compared to the other lipsticks that I have by Pat McGrath. And I do have quite a few. So, uh, it's a little gimmicky, it's a little, I don't know, but I feel like Pat McGrath, like, is she gonna keep going in this direction because I'm really just not a fan. I'm gonna just go into the palette. Oh, she also did have some body highlighters and I, I don't even wear body highlight. So the palette and the lipstick were pretty much all I was gonna be able to, to feel okay about buying. Taking a look at the outside cover of the palette, you can see that it has the Bridgerton inspired decor, it's cardboard. The palette has an 18 month shelf life and it's made in Italy, it looks like. Okay, here is the inside. And again, where Pat McGrath usually has the black shiny lacquer. I'm not even gonna say I'm mad about the cardboard or anything like that anymore. I don't know the ins and outs of this business and how much materials cost or how much she may have had to pay. Netflix, I, I don't know any of that. So I'm just gonna leave that alone. I'm just gonna say this. Bridgerton being what it is, if you've seen it, you know, you've got the queen, you've got all these elite people in the ton. I would have just liked the luxurious feel to go with it because even with that blush palette, I'm thinking that that would be more of a statement type piece, but no one's statementing anything with that cardboard. 
I mean, it, it's just so bulky. I could see if it was something that was lacquered or heavy or weighty, almost like the hockey puck highlighter that she had a couple years back, something like that. That to me would be going on the queen's table. You see what I'm saying? This is not going there and we can pretend, but it's really not. So if you look at the two palettes, there are a lot of similarities. And I'm sure we all know this, and that may be why you may or may not have passed on this round. So here are both Bridgerton palettes side by side, and you see that they are pretty pink heavy. There's like kind of like a light pink shimmer. There's an astral shade in both palettes and kind of like a, a another light pinky shimmer. And the only difference in Bridgerton 2 really just seems to be this gold shade, which I'm hearing is chartreuse. There is an icy blue shade in Bridgerton 2, and it's probably a little bit different than Regency Blue in Bridgerton 1, which is an astral shade. So we'll kind of go into that now. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna enjoy because I know the quality is still gonna be really nice. So let's go ahead and get into the swatches. So the shades are Refinement, Regency Romance, Diamonds Desire, Forbidden Amour, Daring Dandy and Forever Charmed. So here are the shades in the Bridgerton 2 palette and I have them spaced out like this because I am going to come back in a second with some swatches from Bridgerton 1 so you can see how the two palettes compare. And I'm sorry, I also didn't mention that this palette is called Belle of the Ball. So I just call them Bridgerton 1 and 2. So one was Diamond of the First Water and then two is bell of the ball. So I just wanted to share that. Okay, you guys, now what I did here was I put the Bridgerton one palette swatches next to the two swatches. So let me explain the shades. So this shade right here is Iconic Ingenue. And these two are almost like the skin show shades that Pat McGrath includes in her motherships. This shade right here is Art of the Swoon from Bridgerton One. This shade right here is Love Match. So those are the two pinks that I felt were close to this shade in the second palette. Next we have Duchess Divinity. This isn't close to the shade, so I just had to put it here. This shade is Plum Regalia, so it's slightly deeper than this shade. Regency Blue here is the astral shade, and then there's nothing to go with the gold. This shade right here is an astral shade. This is the one from Bridgerton 2. So here you have both palettes together. So as you can see, the standout shades are gonna be the astrals. I think this shade is a standout shade here. Obviously the chartreuse shade is going to be a standout. But when it comes to the skin show shades, the pinks and the plums, those are very, very similar shades. Now when it comes to the shade Forever Charmed, which is our greeny gold shade here, the closest shade match, and I'm sure you've heard this already, is the shade Gigabyte, which is located in the Mothership 3 Subversive palette, which is right here. So I just wanna show you those two side by side as well. So this shade here is the shade Forever Charmed, and this one is Gigabyte. So there's Forever Charmed, and there's Gigabyte. So friends, these are to me, they're exactly the same. Now, just for kicks, I wanted to bring out Celestial Divinity, and that shade that I was pointing at is Megabyte. So that's this one. Put Megabyte here. Not the same, very close. So that's gonna be it for comparisons for Forever Charmed. D just so you know, I know you've heard it, but I'm just saying it again. We have these shades. Sorry, I zoomed in too quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and get into these three looks and then I'll be back at the end to tell you how I'm feeling about this palette. I'm wondering if I'm gonna be surprised. I haven't done anything yet, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now today I am wearing a full face of Pat McGrath and all of those items will be listed in the description box, except for bronzer. My bronzer is rare beauty. Everything else is mama Pat. So let's go ahead and get into this look. I already have an idea about where I'm going with this one. And I definitely want to include Forever Charmed. I'm gonna be starting with a Bristles Beauty E01 DL brush. And I'm gonna be going in to the shade Forbidden Amour, 
which is our deep plum shade. And that is going to be my transition. So I'm just gonna take this shade and focus it in the transition area in and above the crease. I'm just going back and forth. So here's what we have. As per usual, no issues with the quality of Pat McGrath's matte eyeshadows. And this is a shade that we've seen many a time. So I already knew how it was gonna perform. It's, it's excellent. So let's go right into Forever Charmed. And let's get that on the lid. I'm just gonna use my finger. It's very pretty. I just thought these two colors were gonna be very complementary with each other. Trying to find like a huge variety with these six shades. I'm not sure how much we're gonna get, but we are gonna try in this video to see what we can create that shows off the palette in its entirety. I definitely see more variety in this palette than the first one. I can say that with certainty. I'm gonna go back into Forbidden Amour. And this time I'm gonna use a Linda Hallberg 304 brush. And this one has a little more density to it where I can go ahead and tap this onto the outer corner area and kind of take it over top of Forever Charmed and let that also be a smoke shade. Cause this is the deepest shade in the palette. So we don't have anything deeper that we can smoke it with. So we're gonna smoke it with the transition shade. I think it's nice that the shade has that type of versatility to it. And I think it also depends on the brush you use as well. But I think that looks nice. Continuing in the same shade, I'm now going to take a Blend Bunny Cosmetics B1 brush and I'm going to put it under the lower lash line. So you see I've only used two shadows. I think when you have a color like, I was going to call it Gigabyte, like Forever Charmed, we don't really need a whole lot to, to go with it in my opinion. I, I think it, it, it's beautiful and you don't need to dress it up. You really don't. And that's pretty much going to be the look. I am going to finish it off by using Diamonds Desire, the astral shade, and I'm just taking it on a BH Cosmetics. I think this might be some type of lip brush or something like that. And you might wanna spray this one. This one is flaky. And I'm just gonna tap that into the inner corner as a highlight, and then we're gonna be done. Definitely have some fallout with this one, so I would spray it. So there's the first look and the light. The light is continuing to change in my room. So I just turned the exposure down just a little bit so you can see the shades need a little more on this side. So I'm going to finish off the eye look and then we're gonna come back and try the lipstick and then we'll get into two more looks. Okay, you guys, so here is the finished look. So also on my eyes, I use the Charlotte Tilbury Mesmerizing Maroon Eye Pencil, and I just used the matte side today. This is on my top and bottom lashes. Mascara is the Makeup Revolution 5D Lash Pal Mascara. Blush, I'm wearing two Pat McGrath blushes today. I'm wearing the shade Nude Venus, and I'm wearing my favorite Desert Orchid, just a little combo. For Hoing Hoing, I am wearing the Pat McGrath Sublime Skin Highlighter in Lunar Nude, which is this shade here. Now, before we do the lips, let me tell you the other products I have on. I'm wearing the Pat McGrath Foundation. I have a mix of two shades. It's M15 and M17. This is the one I first bought and didn't know what shade I needed. And then I went and bought a 15. I just mixed them together. So I probably need like 15 or 16. My concealer is also by Pat McGrath and this is in M14. I am wearing the Pat McGrath Yellow Blurring Under Eye Powder. This is like that banana shade. And then my bronzer is the Rare Beauty Bronzer Stick in the shade Happy Soul. Now we're gonna try out this lipstick. And again, I have Venetian Peach. Here's what the packaging looks like up close and the bow got me all. And the name of this formula is called Satin Matte. So I believe this is new for her. So I definitely wanted to try it. And here is what Venetian Peach looks like. I am gonna be trying it today without a liner.
this lipstick doesn't have a smell it's very comfortable i don't know what i was trying to taste right there but it's very comfortable on the lips it's got a little shine to it it feels really good so this is look one let me know what you think about it i'll let you know what i think about it in order to really show off different looks with this palette don't use all of the shades just use one or two or maybe three and we can see a little more variety there if you're going to use four or five six shades you're going to have to really be creative with your placement and how you're going to use the shadow to make the looks look different so it's not like bridgerton one which is more of like a one trick pony this one might be more of a two trick pony so let's see what we can do with another look okay you guys i'm back to do a second look oops i left my ears hold on now you can probably tell i still kind of have a bit of a smoky under eye and that's because most likely <laughs> I will be using the same shade. What is this one? Forbidden Amour. Or just put something a little lighter on top. So I just didn't feel like taking it all the way off to put it back on. But we've got a reprimed lid. So let's go into look number two. And for this look, I'm going to start right away with Regency Romance. For that, I'm going to use a dose of Colors Tapered Fluffy Blending Brush. So this pink is, you know, a bit brighter than Forbidden Amour. Forbidden Amour is more like a plum anyway. So this one's going to give us a little more vibrancy to the look. And this one is so similar to those pinks in the first palette. I'm actually gonna go and jump to the lower lash line using the same shade. This is a cosmetics brush from ZC Cosmetics that just came in the palette. I'm just using this end. I think it'll be good for the lower lash line. I'm just gonna sweep this underneath right on top of Forbidden Amour so you barely can tell that it was even there. I'm bringing this down pretty low. I am just going for the drama here with this look. I know it might look a, a, like a lot. So now what I'm gonna do is I wanna take the shade Daring Dandy right here, and it's that icy blue. And let's go ahead and take that on the lid. That's gorgeous. I'm bringing it close into the inner corner. All right, we're gonna leave it like that. This is giving me Bridgerton One vibes. I'm now gonna go into Forever Charmed, the Chartreuse. Bring that up like that, I don't know. So I'm just putting it, kind of outlining our darling dandy. Is it darling dandy? Daring dandy. Outlining daring dandy. So can y'all see that? This brush is by Bodyography Pro and it's a flat shader. I'm gonna do the same outline here. I'm not sure if you can see it. Taking my Dose of Colors tapered fluffy brush and going into Forbidden Amour as the smoke shade. I'm kind of going up in the crease and just meeting Forever Charmed. There we go. I'm trying to remember all these names. I'm gonna go into the shade Refinement, which is like the Skin Show shade. Put that in the inner corner. And let's do a little brow bone highlight with the same shade. And here's look number two. Let me know your thoughts on this one. And as usual, I'll be right back to let you know my thoughts. Okay, you guys, so I'm back with the, the final look. I do like this one. I took a picture like with my eyes closed to make sure it looked okay. I'm like, okay, I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I like the layering of the pink, the gold, and the blue. So, okay, two for two. Oh, let me zoom back in. Because what I really liked that I did on this eye, and I mm, there was a different color that I should have used and I don't know where it is. And I saw it, but I didn't see it with my liners. So I'm gonna find it when I don't need it. But let me just tell you what I used. I used the shade Blue Trip by NYX. So it's a pastel blue. And I was trying to pick up on this blue, but this blue, it kind of has a little bit of uh, green in it. And there is a liner I have by NYX Cosmetics also that is called, a, it's a faux white liner. And I think the shade is like mint and it's a off white tint of green liner. That would have been perfect with this, 
but I think the liner really makes the look pop and makes your eyes pop. And I like the white liners at times. I don't like it all the time, but I love it in this look. Okay, we're two for two with the look. Not saying they're the best looks I've created, but I will say that I can do more looks with this. I, I can work with this. Work with me, people. I'm working with this. Let's get one more look in and then we'll be done. All right, you guys, we are gonna do one more look. I am kind of enjoying the challenge of trying to make each look different. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, take in the Dose of Colors fluffy brush, going into Regency Romance. That's gonna be my transition. Now we're gonna go into Forbidden Amour, same brush. Gonna focus on the outer corner and the inner corner. I'm gonna try to attempt a little halo situation. Just gonna leave it like that. Now we're gonna go into the shade Diamonds Desire, which is our astral shade. Just gonna take that, ooh, on my finger and tap that into that empty space, just like that. Not really getting a whole lot of fallout. I'm just pressing it in with my finger. And then I'm gonna be going back into, oops, Forbidden Amour to just blend this out. So it's not a really harsh line. Halos are not my forte. I just wanna try to showcase some different things we can do though with this, with this palette. Spray that shade, y'all. FYI, make sure you spray it because I'm getting glitter flex everywhere. I'm just being lazy. So that's pretty much the, the halo eye part. I'm gonna take a pencil brush and go into Daring Dandy for the inner corner. Oh, I want. Lastly, I'm gonna go into Forever Charmed and I will show you this brush, Blend Bunnies Cosmetics B3, because everything else I already used. And we're gonna take Forever Charmed, our gold, and let's use that on the lower lash line. So it looks really subtle in the camera, but I can see it pretty good. I'm gonna cut down the exposure by one and see if that helps. So can you see the gold underneath there? Cause this is the, the final look, this is it. This is all I got here. All right, y'all, I'll be back in a second to wrap up the video. All right, you guys, here is the last and final look. There's a little less of the astral shade on this side than this side, I think. So this one might look more like a halo than this, I don't know, but this is it. This is the finished product here. All right, all I did aside from the mascara was I used the Charlotte Tilbury Green Lights liner and I used the metallic side because I was kind of trying to pick up on the, the chartreuse uh, I kind of, like, kind of, but that's it right there. But that's it, I just put that on my lower lash line and uh, called it a day. So that's it for Bridgerton. Ah, uh, did we need it? No, did we ask for it? No. Did we want it? No, not really. Uh, I think we could have done without it. Maybe we could have done without both Bridgertons and put all this effort into Mothership 10. I don't know. I think some people really like this. I think some people are like, huh, we're tired of pink. So I am leaning to the side where I'm tired. I'm tired. Now, let me say this before I say I'm tired. I like all three looks that I created, but I, I feel like if I didn't have this palette, I'd survive. I think my first look was the one I really liked because I love the contrast, but I like all three. Do I see myself reaching for this palette often? I do not. I don't see myself really reaching for it much at all. It will be more of a situation where it's in a palette rotation because I'm not using it, if that makes sense. So that kind of lets you know how I feel about it. As far as the quality, I think the quality is beautiful and I think the looks are great. And the few looks that I have seen on Instagram have looked beautiful. I have used the first Bridgerton palette as a blush palette. I've used it more as blush than eyeshadow. So 
it's not something that I think you need to jump at. I, and I think everybody knows that. And I really don't think anybody is jumping at it. And it's not something that I think you have to pay full price for. I'm more so just wondering when are we going to get the creative Pat McGrath palettes back? Because ever since I've been an avid makeup lover, everything that Pat McGrath has released has been concentrated with pink. And even though I have pretty much all of her palettes and motherships, I got them way late, but I cannot imagine the frenzy on her website or what her website must have been back in the day because mothership one, two, three, four, five, so creative, so different star Wars. I'm sure sold like crazy. When I got divine rose two, that was my first time buying something from a Pat McGrath launch. It was crazy. It was, and the more time that passes with these releases, I don't see them selling out. And on one hand, we could say that she has a lot of stock, but on the other hand, I don't know because that, those motherships and when she had the, the Divine Rose 2 and the limited pink packaging, there was like a lot going on on that launch. And I just remember that. And now I don't even find myself pressed. I'm like, oh, it'll be there. Like, it'll be there. And that says a lot. I'm still holding on to hope, you guys. I'm still feeling a little bit of the loyalty, but not that much. Not with this lipstick here. You only gonna get one of these. I, I no. Now, as far as the shade, I don't think I, I said it. I love the shade. I could wear this shade with or without a liner and be okay with it. And I love how it feels. So it's not necessarily a waste of money. It's just an expensive lipstick. And it's just an expensive palette to not like really love it and wanna enjoy it. Like it's too expensive to just not wanna use it all the time. And, and that's how I feel. So. I'm sure I am preaching to the choir. I've talked to many of you on Instagram and through this platform, I think we're all feeling the same way. So one can only hope for a different color story this year from the Mothership 10. I just feel like the 10 has to be something like, we cannot have Utopian Scheme too. Like we cannot have that. We, there's nothing else we can do with pink. There are no more shades. There's no more shades available. And I have the nerve to still get excited when I see all the sequins and stuff. It's like, what are you getting excited for, Kara? You are setting yourself up for a major setback. But that's it. That's all I got. Thank you so much for taking out some of your time and hanging out with me today with this collection. I hope this was therapy for you. It always is for me. And until I see you again, make sure you are being gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself nice. Stay safe. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye. Block your ears